I'm going to do is copy this uh, dust and debris icon over here to here. I'm going to copy that, and it's just updated. And uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set a, a fair amount of particles for this guy, so all the particles are very kind of tightly packed together. Um, what I'm going to do, even even if we actually had a quantity multiplier at like one percent, it's still going to be too much to deal with in the viewport. So um, I'm going to set a render percentage value actually in this one. Let's make sure we get the right one selected. I'm going to set the render percentage all the way up to about 750 percent okay so it's going to be quite high at the end of the day um, so what we'll have is a new birth event in here with a um, I'm actually going to set it to by rate as before so in case you decide to extend the, the amount of uh, frames in the sequence so I'm going to set that up to 3000 which is going to deal with um, 3000 at the moment but I need to set the emit start to minus 100 as before and the emit stop to 200 uh, which gives us a total of 36,000 particles just over and obviously that's going to be multiplied by um, well basically a factor of 7 in essence so I need to wire the output of this guy into here and I'm going to rename this system let's call that uh, PF source um, intake debris intake debris and this first event I'm going to rename that central core okay um, same principle as before, I'm going to actually set a uh, position icon in here, so I'm going to add that guy there, so that can go in there, and we're just going to use the standard volume as before. Now this particular icon, um, we actually can make this considerably smaller than, uh, than before. However, obviously we've copied it across so it's in the same location to start with as our original one. So obviously it's located at the base of our um, base of our funnel. So obviously you didn't need to reorientate it as previously. Um, so if I scrub forward, <coughs> you'll notice that even though we've actually copied it across, it hasn't maintained the linking. So what I need to do is go back to frame zero and relink or select it in the scene and relink this intake debris icon to our funnel. So I'm just going to quickly do that. So let's just grab this PF source intake debris and I'm going to scoot across there and link that to this guy here. Um, okay, so as I mentioned, we don't need the icon to be that large. What well, that that diameter to, to be that big so I'm actually going to drop the diameter size all the way down to 70 okay so we want it quite tight around the base so it's this kind of out gassing as it's out you know flinging out of um, particular matter around the base as it travels across is the kind of thing we're trying to design with this guy here they're kind of like funneled outwards and sc scooping upwards of the um, um, dust as, as it travels up the uh, up the funnel so because obviously we haven't got anything that's renderable in here at the present time what I want to do is drop in a shape operator now this particular shape operator uh, can be instanced across from something that we've obviously already created and that is going to be the um, particle system that we used in this barn tear debris and it's this shape operator in here so what I can do is I can just simply just grab this guy actually sorry this guy here and I can also grab this um, scale operator in here as well because it's the same kind of properties that we want to apply in our um, other system same kind of principle here we can also grab in the uh, rotation as well and also we can drag in the vortex dust Uh, the delete 
and the collision. Okay, so all we need to do is uh, right click on these guys, go to copy, and then all the way across to here, and then instance them across. So that's almost all of our system already set up for us, quite simply because we've set up a lot of that stuff already to start with. Now, um, the only other thing we need to do really in this particular guy is simply set up our um, display operator, which is obviously going to drive the colors in here as well. So in this particular one, I'm actually going to set the type to circles so we can see what's going on in the viewport and then simply change the color to something that's kind of uh, so it stands out a little bit more so we can tell the difference between these three um, subsystems that we're going to create up. So let's set this to about 175, 133, 88 so it's got this kind of nice browny orangey color so it's okay that um, so that's that one pretty much sorted out the next one we want to introduce is uh, going to be almost identical to this so what I can do is I can take uh, a fair amount of the properties out of this guy and then just take it across to the other system down here so this one I'm simply just going to grab hold of that I'm going to instance that to there and then wire the output of this into actually let's just do it from the other way around it makes it easier there we go okay so we've got the same amount of uh, particles in the birth event however we want the particles to be distributed in a different uh, position um, just so we don't get the same kind of you know initial birth point so it kind of um, breaks it up a little bit more so I want to make that unique and then dial in a new seed in there okay so uh, the shape operator I think we can basically leave as is as well so that can basically be set uh, left at uh, 0.4 uh, scale we can also leave in there as well um, what I actually think we'll do to actually get the particles to kind of lift off the ground a little bit actually, I think we'll also introduce it into this guy as well we'll, we'll stick in another uh, speed operator in here as well so I'm just going to add in a speed operator in here and drop that in just between the scale and the rotation I'm going to set that to a speed value of 10 with a variation of 10 and I'll stick a divergence of 45 degrees in there as well so because I've dropped it in there I need to instance that across to there as well okay um, so obviously at the moment pretty much the uh, these two guys are virtually identical um, what I need to do then is obviously to break it up more with the uh, force operators now to do that what I need to do is let's get rid of this um, vortex dust here so I'm going to make that unique and I'm going to remove these two force space warps out of here so what I want to do is add in the wind core debris space warp so it kind of breaks it up in comparison with this so in, in contrast with this central core which is just simply just going up and I want to take in the uh, vortex middle core as well so even though this is this is basically the dust one which is similar to the other ones which, we'd, which was about the same as the other ones which we've been dealing with earlier on so obviously it's fine the car, fine the kind of particular matter and find the kind of tendril stuff that we want to deal with in this guy this one is um, going to be slightly wider so this one is going to be more kind of confined within the core and this one is going to be slightly wider because of the uh, the vortex space wall because it's a, it's not as it won't keep the particles as tight within the central core this one will actually let them kind of fling out a little bit more so because they're flinging out a bit more we need to obviously break it up a little bit by using this these two wind space warps here okay so that's that one set up um, I think the uh, last thing to do actually in this guy was a couple of things obviously need to rename this I think we'll set the color in here as well this one I think so we can see it in the viewport easily we'll actually change that to diamonds and we'll actually change the color just to a darker a darker brown color and this one I think we'll actually set to about 110 um, 
110, 75, uh, 40. That'll do it. So it's dark, in essence a darker version of what we already had. Okay, so let's just rename that. Let's call that uh, middle core. And the last one we need to do is the outer core, obviously. So same kind of deal as before. I'm just going to instance that across to there and wire the input into the main system. I'm just going to shift that across so we can do any kind of wiring overlaps or anything like that. Rename this outer core. Uh, we can leave the birth operator as is. However, as before, we need to set the new seed value in this position icon so I'm just going to make that unique set a new seed value in there uh, the shape we can again we can again leave as is the speed operator I think will actually uh, change that slightly let's just kick that up a little bit more I'm going to set that to let's say about 40 in that one so it lifts them up a little bit more around the outer edges otherwise it might not get picked up um, the force operator, what I think we'll do is we'll um, remove this vortex middle core out of there, keep the two core debris in there as well because obviously they're still relevant, and we'll use the vortex outer core to drive the, the way the particles move around the vortex. Okay, one last thing to do in this guy here, and that is simply to change the display operator. So I'm going to change this one to, I think I'll change that to circles. I think, I think I've got circles. Actually, no, that's already instance, isn't it? So let's put that back to diamonds. Where are you? There you go. need to make that unique. Oh, I turned it off by accident. Make unique and then turn it back on. Uh, this one, I think, let's um, let's give it asterisk, asterisks, and then let's change the colour to something darker still. So something along the lines of about RGB 55, uh, 43, 30. That'll do. Okay. So that is pretty much our systems all set up so this one I think I'll obviously need to set the motion blur in this guy as well and because there's a fair amount of particles in here I think I'll leave the uh, shadows to receive and cast in there as well so we get some nice kind of overlapping of shadows within the tightness areas of the base of the uh, base of the funnel um, if you are having issues with render times, just as a side note, um, you might want to go through and turn um, receive and cast shadows off for this system and the other dust and debris ones as well, which obviously will uh, speed up render times because it will basically go through and it will get to a certain point and it will just grind to a halt almost. Um, one other thing you might want to do, just as a side note before we uh, go to the actual final render, um, the daylight system that we're using is using these skylight lights. Now what you might want to do is replace the entire thing with a dome rig which will uh, spend a little bit of time calculating the shadows uh, when just before it starts rendering itself um, but it will actually save time overall. So let's go and re-enable all our systems. Actually before I do that I think I'll save it before I do anything else and um, just going to go through, actually it's going to take a little bit of time to do because obviously there's all this information to do now plus my hard drive has spanned down. So saving now, done, turn this guy back on, making sure I'm at frame zero obviously, turn the dust and debris on, turn the PF source impacts on which is going to take a little bit of a while to do and then the barn tear debris as well and that is all of the systems set up now so I can simply close that uh, we've obviously got the barn hidden at the moment we can start seeing it we can see all our systems working together here it looks quite <laughs> quite interesting 
Um, and I'm just going to unhide all of these guys, which takes a little bit of a time to do, quite simply because the amount of information that it needs to draw out. And that is pretty much the end of our tutorial. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, sorry for the uh, length of time it's actually taken to construct this thing. Because obviously you can see that it's quite technical and quite long-winded to actually set all this stuff up. So um, these things obviously can't be rushed. So obviously, um, hopefully you've enjoyed this and learned something new about particle flow and also a little bit about scripting as well. So. Um, what I'm going to do at this particular stage is just uh, render this out to a bitmap sequence now. Um, it will take a little bit of time to uh, calculate the uh, initial particle positions. Um, there's no denying this, it's quite simply because of the sheer amount of particles that we're scattering across this geometry here and also the fact that particle flow needs to pre-calculate the positions prior to frame zero for all of these guys around here, specifically all this information around here and also any kind of particle to uh, deflector interactions. Um, so I'm going to go through now and uh, click render so that's going to go through and start calculating particle positions down here so it's going to take a little bit of a while to do. Um, so while it's basically doing that let's have a quick little chinwag about uh, what we can do to take this further.